Let's uh, get the views now of one of Syria's uh, most prominent political activists, Rami al Jara, who's uh, with me here in uh, Doha. You had quite a few problems getting into Qatar yesterday, yes. and there was a bit of a stir on Twitter. Uh, we'll talk about that in, in just a moment or two. But uh, but first, tell me about how you came to leave Syria. You're a blogger. You you wrote under a pseudonym, right. but your real identity was discovered, right? Uh, right, yeah. I was uh, basically reporting in Damascus. I, I worked with a number of outlets outside the country. And uh, I was compromised by Syrian intelligence. They basically found out the pseudonym that I was using. Which was? And Alexander Page. Uh -huh. right. and, and what happened to you when they found out? When they found out, I'd, uh, I'd, I fled the country straight away. I fled uh, the, through the border because I knew that the Air Force intelligence had placed my name at the airport. So I had to go out through the border. Did you feel threatened, intimidated? Um, of course, definitely. I'd been detained before in, in the beginning of the uprising and uh, I knew what would happen if I got caught again. Why? Well, you say if, if you got caught again, what would have happened to you? I would have been considered a traitor. I would have been considered a spy yeah. because I spoke to, the, to Western media. Uh, as we all know, in Syria, we don't have any media. Anyone trying to infiltrate that or talk to people outside the country, tell them what's happening is... Uh, punished with the when most. you when you were detained before how were you treated I was uh, tortured but mildly for three days you say taught what did they do to you um, suffocation I wasn't allowed to sit eat drink or drink or sleep sleep for uh, three days I was beaten to uh, the torso to the legs uh, they threw water at me that, that with that was mixed with bleach or something like that for some reason uh, which would basically make me pass out and then they wouldn't let me sit down they would pick me up again how did, how did you get out of that what, what happened to uh, I was asked to sign papers that basically said that I was a terrorist and that I'd been sent to Syria to cause disruption in Syria and still when you when you were released you went back to blogging right it, it, it became much more serious for me so right. you know. right. okay so what's happened to you since you left you left the country what back in in October uh, yeah, I left on the 5th of October. That's when I, I, I fled. I went to Jordan and uh, then I took a plane to Cairo, where I'm now based. Uh, we've, issued a, uh, we've issued an office that basically coordinates with the activists on the ground. Uh, it's to help train journalists, citizen journalists on the ground, how to report and basically bridge that with, with Western media, given that there are no journalists really in Syria. OK, I want to ask you about what happened to you when you got to Qatar in a moment. But first, how scared are people, are your fellow Syrians, on the ground they're terrified they're terrified um, I mean now outside the country I don't understand how they do it when I was there people would tell me how do you do it it's I, I think it's a rush it's to be able to go out and demonstrate it's that feeling you get the first time and then the next time you're just looking for it but now I look at it I, I don't know what these people are doing how, how they can stand the possibility of getting shot in, in, in a demonstration, in a peaceful demonstration. And, and what happened to cause all this stir on Twitter uh, yesterday and other social media networks when you arrived in Qatar? If you if you looked at the the Twitter sphere, it, it said that you'd been denied entry. Right. Uh, I arrived. They uh, the Qatar officials told me that I'd actually been to Qatar before. I told them I'd never been to the country. Uh, they asked me if I'd lost my passport. I told them uh, I did once in 2005. So I, I, they didn't tell me what the problem was, but then they told me that I couldn't go in and that they were going to send me to Syria. Uh, I'm obviously wanted in Syria, so I basically tweeted it and asked for support. And uh, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone on Twitter that did support me because it's because of them that I, I was able to get in and I wasn't sent to Syria. There, there was a, a huge outpouring on, on, on Twitter after that. If anyone was, was watching yesterday, you can't fail to, to have missed it. But um, uh, Rami, good to see you here. Many thanks thank indeed for, for coming thank in and, uh, and sharing you your experiences with us. That's uh, Rami Al Jara.